the last episode, Damien might have jinxed it. He was like, the same mm-hmm. play's going to have nothing. Uh, it had a few notable things. I will say that. You know, mm-hmm. we thought it was going to be mostly indie games, but obviously, second fucking PlayStation was just like, no, nope, we're going to have some uh, some really high profile games, including Marvel Spider Man 2 on here. So uh, they showed off Avatar Frontiers of Pandora, once again, coming out December 7th. Marvel Spider Man 2, they showed off a bunch of uh, the open world stuff, the suits, sort of how certain gameplay aspects work. And then last but not least, Final Fantasy 7 Rebirth, which has a official release date of now February 29th, 2024. Yeah, that's fucked up. I, so like <laughs> like that game comes out the same month as a uh, wait, shut up, stay to play. Um, <laughs> that that comes out the same month as Persona 3 Reload and that's insane. I really hope I don't have a busy semester <laughs> cuz that's going to suck. But either yeah. way, actually, yeah, it wasn't like a bad state of play. Uh, I mean, it, again, I think state of plays always have the issue where like they just don't have like any surprises a lot of the time. Mm-hmm. It's mostly just like things we know. Yeah. Um I, I was joking because I'm like, there's no way Capcom is going to show anything to stay a play. Like, the Ravi show, like, everything. What else could it show? There's, oh, here's a, here's a RE4 remake DLC. I'm like, okay, there you go. Yep. Capcom always got Sony's <laughs> back. But, um, yeah, from what they've shown, like, the Spider-Man gameplay looks really good. Um, you know, obviously, a bunch of previews went out for the game. And, um, yeah, I'm just so excited for it. You know, like, I think all the open world stuff looks really cool. Uh, just a lot more improved from the first game. Mm-hmm. The, uh, the web wings look really fun to control. Uh, and it doesn't look like it's going to be like a, you know, like obviously web swinging is still a thing you're going to do, but like that sort of extra movement option sounds really fun to do as well. Um, I think the combat in general just looks a lot better than the first game, which is saying a lot because I really, really like the combat from the first uh, Spider-Man. Mm-hmm. So um, it, it just looks like it's everything but better. So um, I'm very excited for Spider-Man too. Um, and uh, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth looks fucking really good <laughs> as well. Um, I'm very excited for it. Um, I'm happy to keeping a lot of things that made Remake really good, like as in the combat. I think the yeah. combat is still probably my favorite uh, out of any uh, Final Fantasy game. It's really good. Um, you know, a lot of crazy story stuff happening. You know, they're, they're going to be retreading a lot of the story beats that people wanted them to do. But it's probably going to get weird at the end like Remake did. So we'll <laughs> see how that works. But um, yeah, like graphically, it looks gorgeous. Like I'm happy the game is still pretty silly. Like there's a lot of silly things going on. Uh, and yeah, like Rebuff just looks so so good. Uh, and it comes out like way sooner than I thought it was. So uh, I was really, I was hoping it was like March at least, but it's not. <laughs> so that's gonna be fun. But yeah, overall, it was, it was a pretty okay stay of play. You know, like they showed things I want to see, but again, no real surprises or anything. So. Yeah, you know, the fact that we got Spider-Man 2 in it was just, you know, enough for me personally. Yeah. Um, you know, just seeing how the new gameplay stuff that they showed off, such as, you know, both Spider-Man just being able to help each other out within certain missions. And also, I think they're hinting at Mysterio also being in the game mm-hmm. with that one random guy that we see dressed in purple. And on top of that, there's like the weird green mist thing that we saw as well, like that oh, icon. Yeah. So it's pretty obvious that they're trying to hint at Mysterio. Hopefully, hopefully. Um, Give me Mysterio. <laughs> yeah i think that that is gonna be a lot of fun with just like the side missions and, and whatnot and also these suits i think that that was like a big takeaway for a lot of people mm-hmm. seeing the black suit raimi suit was a big thing for a lot of people uh but my thing was just seeing the 10th anniversary miles morales suit it's the one where he's in i think the all black with like the red accents on it or whatever yeah now when i first saw it when i was reading the comics i was like this kind of looks bad it's grown on me over uh i guess like the few years since it came out but you know I hope that it looks just as good in the game as we saw within this trailer. Yeah, um, it's also cool that every suit has like recolors now, so that's mm-hmm. pretty cool. Um, also, like I saw people like when the game goes on PC, like they could probably use those slots for like more <laughs> like custom skins too. Yeah. So like, that's pretty cool. Um, but yeah, it just seems like they're putting a lot of care into this game, and I know we're both very excited for it. Uh, I know Chad is about to explode <laughs> when that game comes out, so I'm very excited for it as well. Though, so yeah, I cannot wait for it. Yeah, no, nah, I mean, just just as like a side thing, I've been uh, trying to 100% the remaster because I actually never did because right. when it came out, I literally just played it just to see the new Peter Parker model. So I'm just going through the remaster, doing everything over again. And, you know, I just I just can't wait until I get back into Miles Morales because I really do like that game. And it's been since launch since I played that one. So, you know, I'm very much looking forward to Marvel Spider-Man 2. And it has officially gone gold, which is great. We mm-hmm. got this sort of uh, actor video with them being like, it's gone gold guys you know get excited for it and i'm glad that you know insomniac games have not necessarily crunched or really pushed their developers because you know they literally announced this a month before it has come out so obviously they were prepared and you know sort of looking forward to them finishing the game well in advance before the game has officially released 
Yeah, and uh, <laughs> we got more news over the stupid <laughs> face. <laughs> <We got more. laughs> so yeah, like Yuri, you know, voice actor for Spider Man. Uh, he, he, you know, he did like this like interview or something. And he's basically like he wants people to get over like the new face. <laughs> I, I kind of agree. We've talked about this so many times. I am like, personally on my own channel a lot. Like, come on. <laughs> yeah, we we have talked about it like a lot. And at this point, it just is what it is. Like, you know, I think mm-hmm. it's fine if you don't like it. Like, but like, I feel like just carrying it over for like I don't know. When the, the remaster came out like three years ago at this point. Like, yep. get over it. <laughs> like, it's fine. Like, again, like, am I the biggest fan of the new face? Like, I don't know. Like, I, I really don't care that much. But I will say, I think the old face probably looked a bit better just because it feels like it stuck out a bit more, like mm-hmm. compared to all the other Spider Men. But um, I, I still don't think it matters that much. Again, most of the time he is going to have the mask on. So in like 90% of the gameplay, like you're not going to see his face anyway. Uh, it's just mostly during cutscenes and stuff. But um, yeah, I mean, I basically agree with him being like, I, I think we should just get over it at this point. You know, it's, it was their decision to make. Mm-hmm. And if people didn't like it, then that's fine. But yeah, I, I don't think it detracts from the game at all. So it, it really shouldn't matter that much. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, just taking the exact quote that he said within this interview, who, you know, Insomniac Games approached him and was like, hey, you know, we're changing the face, so then the facial animation is better than he said. I'm all in. You know, he doesn't care if he looks like a goblin or whatever. As long as the performance within the game looks better for him, then he's like, yeah, sure, whatever. And, you know, him saying that, like, people should get over it, I'm glad he said that because I've been saying this for years at this point. I feel like, you know, people want the old face to come back, but Insomniac Games have said multiple times that, like, it's not going to happen just because they made that decision years ago and they went with it because, you know, they knew what it meant to transition from the PlayStation 4 to the PlayStation 5. And nothing against the old actor is just that they use this new face to better capture how Yuri is as Spider Man. And, you know, like you said, he's going to be in the mass 90% of the time, anyways. And on top of that, it's another fucking white boy. Like, it doesn't matter. Like, I said this shit, I said this shit the last time. Peter Parker is just another white boy. It doesn't really matter what he looks like, not necessarily. I know the whole cinematic trailer came out that got leaked from, I think, Brazil or something like that. So people have lightened up to the face more, seeing it within that particular CGI cinematic. Um, You know, and yeah, I mean, I think that once we actually get into the game and people actually get to see how it looks like within certain cutscenes, people will probably forget about the old face and hopefully we'll get over it because you can keep begging. You can keep saying that I don't like the new face, yada, 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 but like you can't really do much about it other than wait for the P- the uh, PC version come out and have modders to do whatever the hell they want with it. Yeah, I don't know. I, to me, it's always been like such a like. I don't really care. Like I don't know. I, like characters get redesigned all the time anyway. Yeah. Like you know, when they go to neck from one generation to the next, like it, it's fine. It happens all the time. Mm-hmm. Like it, it really isn't anything to get worried. Like dude, Ratchet's face has changed like five times. Like I, I usually don't really care. <laughs> like redesigns is always like you know. Sometimes they, they don't look great, but um, you know, sometimes it doesn't really matter. And for the for again for Spider Man, it's mostly about his suit anyway, and he looks he looks good in it, so it's fine. <laughs> yeah, and just picking back off of that it's spider-man we've had 20 billion versions of this fucking character it's fine guys yeah it's okay uh but moving on from there yuri lowenthal also said that he would like to be playing spider-man forever i mean i think that most actors that play the character say this at at one point within their career hopefully you know i hope that they do like playing this character but you know he's like in his 50s and the fact that he is privileged to play this character that is within like his like 20s or whatever you know he's he's grateful for that in and of itself and you know if they ever do decide to step away from his version of spider-man you know he's not going to be you know pissed about it or whatever you know he had a good run is is pretty much what he said so yeah you know i'm glad that he's looking at you know this role in in a much positive light and you know him being like i want to keep playing spider-man forever because i know that a lot of people that maybe read spider-man comics or do whatever you know they may hear his voice now which is like crazy because you know he's still a newer version of this character yeah i mean i think he he fits the voice really well even though you know he has you know he's getting up there in terms of mm-hmm. age <laughs> himself but like, <laughs> I, I think i think he voices spider-man really well and like yeah. to me it sounds like a really good version of spider-man um so like i i have no problem with him continuing to voice like I, at least this version of spider-man forever mm-hmm. um obviously if a soniac is done with this spider-man story then yeah you know that would be up to whoever else wants to make a spider-man game to get him or whatever yeah. but um I, i'm really glad a soniac did decide to get him because I, I think he really fits spider-man really well at least to me anyway like he mm-hmm. he has he has that like that spunk yes like he feels like a 20 year old <laughs> <laughs> in spirit so yeah I, I think he's been doing a great job and um i'm really excited to hear his performance in spider-man 2 because it seems like it's gonna be a lot more 
um, emotional and a lot more like, you know, because he has the black suit on. So I, I can't mm-hmm. wait to hear that like some more. So, uh, but yeah, I, I think he's, he's been doing a fantastic job as Spider-Man and um, forever long as Sony Act wants to go with this <laughs> series, I, I'm okay with it. <laughs> yeah. And like if he happens to branch off into like maybe live action, you know, maybe you could play a much older Peter Parker. Maybe if they ever decide to adapt the Spider-Man life story story where pretty much as the years go on, Spider-Man actually ages and shit like that. I think that that would be cool to have him maybe in that role. I don't know. That's just me spitballing here. But yeah, you know, when the 2018 was first announced, I was hoping that it was going to be Josh Keaton as Spider-Man. But obviously, you know, my favorite didn't make it. He is Electro or whatever. So, you know, that's fine, I guess. But, you know, (laughs) Yuri has definitely grown on me over the years, obviously. So. All right. And lastly, we have the accessibility options. And it's a lot. You know, if there's something... (laughs) If it's something Sony games and uh, Sony, I, and especially, I've been really good at is the uh, just the the pure mass of accessibility options. Like there, there's mm-hmm. a lot of them. So there's like gameplay stuff here. For obviously, you could just like you could adjust all of this. You could adjust enemy health, enemy damage, stealth aware- awareness. Uh, you could simplify puzzles and a bunch of other stuff. Like it's there's a lot of little things you could tweak in terms of gameplay. And then you have, like, the more, I guess, like, general help stuff. So you could, like, slow down game speed with a single press of a button. So you mm-hmm. could do that by, like, 70, 50, 30 uh, percent. And then you have a bunch of other, like, stuff where you could, like, yank things, air launch things, that, like, with more simple button combinations as well. And, of course, you have all your audio settings, you know, depending on how your hearing is. You have a bunch of crazy settings that I don't even know because <laughs> I, <you know, laughs> I, I just don't. But, yeah, there's, there's a lot of cool stuff here. And apparently there's going to be even more post-launch. Yes. Uh, it's supposed to be, like, screen readers and captions and audio descriptions. So um, it looks like they're, they're doing a lot to uh, really cater to basically any player of, like, any, you know, uh, accessibility option. Like, it was like that for Riff Apart as well. Like, you did a great yeah. job with that game as well. Um, you know, I think Naughty Dog probably still have the best, uh, you know, options there. Like, the Last of Us 2 stuff was, like, pretty crazy. But, yes. uh, you know, it's always good for more people to play these games, especially when it's, like, something like Spider-Man that has, like, pretty big general, like, appeal. So I think yeah. that's great that they uh, put a lot of care into this. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely with like pretty much every single first party PlayStation game for like the past five years has had these insane accessibility options that, you know, most players may not even touch. But to those that will, you know, it's nice to have them. I think yeah. that the sort of challenge level modifiers with the enemy health damage and stealth awareness, I think that that is such a nice thing to have because, you know, you may want to play on the normal difficulty. But hey, you know what? You may be having a hard time with the stealth sections or maybe you're getting hit too many times or whatever. So, you know what? You could lower these down or maybe... Maybe if you want a, a much higher challenge, you know, you could amp these up if you want, but also keep that like normal difficulty or whatever. So, you know, pretty much catering to however you want to play. And also with the game speed thing that was leaked, I think last month or whatever. So glad to see them to finally officially unveil it. And on top of that, um, you can map these to the shortcuts. That's pretty much what this menu is, you know, so like the yank throw, the throwing, the uh, air launch, all of that stuff, you could map to the left or right D-pad. So that's pretty nice, especially if you don't want to like hold the buttons or whatever the case is. Um, and then I think the last gameplay thing that I want to mention is that uh, with the game speed. The, oh, no, oh, yeah, yeah, go yeah. on. I was going to say, uh, I forgot I mentioned the fall damage thing. Like, oh, you yeah. can enable fall damage <laughs> yeah, <laughs> if so, you want. So. Uh, that was the thing that they talked about earlier this week that I forgot to put in these notes. But yeah, you know, fall damage is a thing that you can enable if you want, if you want that extra realism, if you will. Personally, I'm not going to turn it on because I'm playing the yeah. game. I want to have fun, maybe. <laughs> um, but with the whole game speed thing, I, one thing that I really do like that they mentioned within the third bullet point is that, like, so those people that take the photo mode stuff, you can enable it and then, mm-hmm. you know, slow down time and then like get like the perfect shot that you want so yeah that's good yeah i can't wait to see what those i guess like spider-man 2 photographers could really cook up there because i think that that will be a lot of fun to see what they could do yeah that's actually a good option like you know i I, a lot of these are just good for general use as well like you you don't even need to have like you know any special needs or whatever like if you just need like certain things i remember in horizon forbidden west i think there was like an auto loot feature and i turned Mm -hmm. that shit on because i didn't want to loot like everything (laughs) (laughs) so like like these options are just good in general to like really customize how you want your gaming experience to be which is also just nice to have like i feel like more companies should take note of like what sony first party devs like do with this stuff because uh it helps a lot you know it's it's really nice 
does. <laughs> it definitely does. And, you know, obviously because they are part of PlayStation or whatever, they have the budget to, you know, allocate these resources to mm-hmm. make these things happen. So yeah. hopefully, you know, eventually every single game could have these options to a certain extent. They don't need to have every single one, obviously, but I think having the, you know, maybe like the audio ones or, you know, maybe like the auto loot stuff, I think that that is always, you know, like pretty nice, like quality of life stuff to have. Mm-hmm. 